According to the Shambhala school, the word Shambhala refers to, and I quote, the planetary crown chakra, the center where the will of God is known, unquote. From Thoth we receive, the Shambhala gate actually contains the entry point into the Numis Om, that is the first stage of the new earth star. You can see this gate somewhat like a control panel. On the panel, there are various buttons, nodes, that if pressed or triggered, open specific frequency vectors. One of these vectors is the lotus stalk, or streaming, into Numis Om. In the year 2000, which was 23 years ago, as of the time this recording is being made, I received information that contained things I had already received but was far more developed. And this was on basically the stages of the transition into the new Earth star, that is from a world system one to a world system two, from entropy to centropy. What will be presented here is an outline of a much larger picture, and I've made other videos and written other material that is connected to this. So I will be placing in the information box below this video links to this material if you wish to pursue it in depth. In the information I received and wrote about 23 years ago, the outline that I was given it does not include anything on the pyramid's radius matrix, which I did not receive until 2015. However, that does not affect what is being offered here. And I will place a link again to that video on the pyramid's radius in the information box below this video. The first part of this article begins with the dynamics of the 4444 Stargate, which is the access to the new Earth star. And then it proceeds into the stages of ascension. The following article is a composite of information that appeared in several different articles in Temple Doors, Volume 1, 1997. I was guided to put it together in the manner it appears below and do some editing to bring it up to date. That would be up to date to the year 2000. Maharatri. This is a membrane on this side of the stargate. It's within the oratronic realm or dark star habitation or black cube. The Maharim is the membrane on the other side of the stargate. This is metatronic, full light spectrum within the realm of the white star habitation or the cube of stars. The golden pillar of light, the protective and formulative envelope for passage of matter between the two membranes of the 4444 stargate, the Maharatri and the Maharim. The pillar of light which extends from the Maharatri membrane through the star grail, the 4444 stargate, and into the Maharim membrane is called the Sikiyum pillar. This pillar is inclusive of both the Maharatri and Maharim membranes themselves as well. This pillar forms the field of deliverance from the Oratronic Earth into the new Earth star of Metatron. The golden pillar of individuation, which aligns to each biosystem that is in resonance with the dynamic of the star grail, is called the Avatakilin pillar. This pillar represents the individual extension of the 4444 star grail dynamic to that individual. Star of David Transfer Star Tetrahedron Merkaba interface with human beings transferring their complete light bodies 
inclusive of the physical, that is the light codes of the physical, into a higher pure gem state. Aeropax, also called the Isis I, the main geometric for LP40, that's Light Principle 40, the flashpoint of ascension. It will fit within the pillar of light, that zone of protection and formulation that will keep our matter bodies inviolate as we pass through the eye of the needle, the 4444 Ascension Stargate. And now the stages of planetary ascension. The Earth moves into the conversion zone. This zone can be seen in sacred geometry as the central diamond-shaped containment field within the aeropax that holds the jewel flame. There will be certain astronomical and astrological corollaries to the Earth's entrance into this region, beginning with our movement spatially into the inner zone of the photon belt. We are already in the outer sheath of this belt. As this begins to occur, we will see greater geologic disturbances in the Earth, especially earthquakes and volcanic action. Once the planet is fully within the conversion zone, so its central sun atoma in the center of the Earth will lock onto the greater Aeropax coordinates coming from the 4444 Stargate, placing this sphere we currently inhabit into the center of the Isis Eye. The opening of the lotus. The Great Pyramid at Giza becomes the thresholding chamber for the ascension fulfillment. Within this ancient structure is contained an etheric temple counterpart Thoth refers to as the Temple of the Morning Star. The components are Adonai Kodesh, Inside the Temple of the Morning Star is a golden cube with a sphere inside connected to a blue hole, which differs from a black hole in that it is responsive to sentient consciousness control. Projection of blue needles into the Great Pyramid's Vault of Osiris. activates the violet flame. Lotus unfolds, sending golden needles out into the planet, calibrating the vibration of all matter to register upon a specific threshold, which the Keys of Enoch calls the sacred formula grid. Calibration of the Midnight Sun these are the components. Shield of the sun. The sun will begin to create an opposite force field, an antimatter or midnight sun. Ultramatter rushes through the blue hole as it is drawn upon by the antimatter solar shield. This ultramatter envelops the entire planet. Lightning paths. Paths for high transmission of metatronic overlays within the oratronic membrane. These electrical passages are created by the antimatter of the solar shield into the ultramatter now permeating the Earth. The lightning paths will cause the atmosphere of Earth to become charged with itons. Itons. These are particles of supra-atomic substance created by breaking atomic bonding to the oratronic spiral. These particles act as seeds for the metatronic or full light consciousness in this reality system. Itons are atoms that have been turned inside out. Once our physical atoms have the proper light mathematical encodings to itonize, we will be able to safely pass through the LP40 Ascension. The Golden Taya and Tetra Trions. The Golden Taya are the land areas on the planet encoded to move their etheric substance through the Stargate with those humans 
who are ready to ascend. Tetratrions are hyperspace tetrahedrons with open ends connecting to one another to form dimensional transference zones. It is through the tetratrions that energy travels between different dimensions. As the tetratrionic activity escalates within the golden Taya zones, there will be gradient levels of light interaction at the cellular level for all living things within these energy fields. Tetratrionic activity will not be present in land regions of the Earth that are not within the golden Taya zones. The sacred rushing. Uprushing of energy response from the central sonatoma of the planet. This will be transmitted to the center of all biophysical brains as a humming like a hive of bees. This will create a state of euphoria in all animals and most humans. Most humans who have not chosen ascension and thus are not encoded with the transference fire letters will physically go through the death transition in this experience. Inner Earth Elohim will awaken and move upon the surface of the Earth, visible to those who bear the light codes for ascension into the new Earth star. The release of the Gaia Vatha and the transference of the planetary genius. A wave of golden light known as the Gaia Vatha will updwell from the atoma of this sphere and enter all matter resonant with the 4444 octave of ascension. This golden light, which will be plainly visible to the human eye at that time, contains all the light codes of the earth, even those portions that will not go through the stargate. However, those portions which will be registering in the stargate will be saturated into the ascending matter to be carried as a full holographic insertion into the new Earth star. The planetary genius will be retrieved from the center of the Earth and transferred into the new Earth star. According to Thoth, the planetary genius is defined as the completed thought form containing the identity consciousness for our world domain from its alpha through omega. It is untainted, free of all illusion, and yet it is not omnipotent as it defines and identifies. Therefore, it has a distinct polarity, and that polarity is to qualify and preserve the Ashatan of the earth. From Rowena Patty Kreider's Gaia Matrix Oracle, she defines Ashatan thusly. The Earth is a wisdom body. Gaia has the perennial tradition at her core. Ishatan means the last things. All can be consumed except the truth, represented by the new Earth spiritual world. The phase of Ishatan is an illuminative, fiery, spiritual consummation of the Earth and all beings within and upon her. That is the end of quotes. Next comes the Orahim vehicles of light activating and conducting the Star of David, Star Tetrahedron Merkabas, for primary ascension. The Orahim will create a unified field in our space-time, allowing all other electromagnetic zones within our Earth spectrum to become present in one waveform. Thus, we will see many beings among us, and they will see us. All these ensouled ones will share the ascension experience with us as there will no longer be the separate zones or compartments to this fractured planetary consciousness as in the past. Included will be the Siddhi races of the fairy beings, those residents of the inner earth and other dwellers of our earth and sphere who have until now remained behind the veil for us. The Orahim light vehicles will create stability zones around the Golden Tire regions, and further codes of light will be inserted through these fields, allowing greater beings of light to enter our domain. These supernal ones will prepare us spiritually and physically for our ascent through the gate of the Star Grail and into the new Earth Star. 
they will begin the sequencing of light code firings in our bodies, already greatly transformed by the LP40 process thus far, which will register the sacred Star of David configuration around our individual forms. This star will then become an eight-pointed star tetrahedron encompassing the whole body within it. The Division of Souls During LP40 The New Earth Voyagers Those souls who have chosen through their higher self to move through the 4444 Stargate and into the New Earth Consciousness. They will be euphoric but alert in the now moment with the transformation of LP40 as it takes place. The Sleepers those souls who are not ready for the Metatronic full light path of the new Earth star and have chosen to leave this incarnation and insert themselves into the incarnating field of another Oratronic or half-light world. The sleepers will be in a dreamy euphoric trance during LP40 and most will blissfully leave their bodies moving away from this realm and into another world presence with the half-light universe. The walkers. These are the souls who have so little light body, whether through physical and emotional damage to it or due to very dense karma, that they will not experience any of the beauty of LP40. They will see the world darkly, seeming to exist in a dark cloud. They will not be able to think or reason clearly due to the breaking up of the lower akasha and will be fearful and in emotional anguish. Some will experience physical discomfort. Most will perish in the rushing of energies from the center of the planet, which will electrocute most of these persons. However, some will survive through sheer personal will, only to die in the final entropic breakdown of the planet within a 30-day period, more or less, after LP40. The walkers, like the sleepers, will then move into another world of the half-light Oratron. The Secondary Ascension. From among the first wave, or those who ascend in the primary, will be souls who choose to come back through the threshold and aid other souls who in the 11th hour have made the decision to ascend into the New Earth Star. They will assist the angelics in helping these latecomers through the portal. Many of the sleepers will be guided through, fewer of the walkers. Transport of disembodied earth souls into the new earth star. Souls of the earth who are not embodied during LP40 will go through their process of transference into the new earth star. The disembodied voyagers will go through an alignment of their etheric bodies with the Adam Kadmon template so that they will be able to enter the new physical format. In fact, some Voyager candidates currently within non-corporeal forms are already working between the two subzones on either side of the star grail, the Maharatri and the Maharim. They will, of course, have to be inscripted during LP40 in order to actually enter the new Earth star. But in the meantime, some souls are being allowed entrance into the Numis Ohm, the preformative New Earth matrix. I will add here, of course, we're looking at linear time when we say that, because we're all everywhere if we take ourselves outside of that. We're already in the New Earth star. That's a mind bender, I know. So I'm keeping here to a, a, a discovery of the process in a linear time frame within this article. This concludes what I wrote in the year 2000, which is based primarily on what I wrote in the 1990s. Now let us take some moments to view it from the perspective of 2023. I now know about the Pyramidus Radius, that platform between the old Earth and the new Earth, really just hovering, shall we say, over the old Earth. I'm speaking spatially here, and of course it's not spatial, but I'm trying to give you an idea. 
I also now know that the number of people who have the potential of moving through this Stargate from a World System 1 to a World System 2 has actually increased since the initial information was given to me in the 1990s. This is due, Thoth tells me, to some kind of change in the timeline, whatever exactly that means. But it's certainly good news for the people of the planet. And one would wonder how that could possibly be when we see so much ugliness around us that's happening now. But that's because it's being dredged up to be released. And things have to fall apart on that level in order to move into a higher level. So all of these things, as bad as they may seem, are not an indicator of really the potential of the souls on this planet, those who are accepting that vibration, to accept it and to move through into the new world system. And then there are the walkers, and they seem to be such a sad group, a tragic ending for them. And that's always concerned me. I don't like to see that or think about people, even, you know, hardened criminals and whatever. I feel sorry for these people. I can't help it. Or let's say I have empathy for them, for their souls, no matter how many evil deeds they've committed. And yet, so it reminds me that when we're talking about the walkers, for the most part, the ones that are totally unredeemable in, in a current understanding. Um, and that's most of them. There could be an exception here and there. These are souls that have been working at this for a long time. They have embraced it and embraced it and embraced it. And in fact, most of them were able to enter into the earthen field of the electromagnetic zones here, or some of those zones, only because the, what Thoth calls, Archonic Cloud gained entry. And it gained entry because humanity made some mistakes along the way. And um, even though we're greatly protected from the, the larger impact of the Archonic Cloud, it was enough to create a, an opening for certain souls to come into this field that were, as Thoth calls them, Archonically invested. It's a very long story, but let us just say here that these souls are ultimately redeemable, but they aren't in the short term. So they're going to have to go through a lot before that point arises. And they don't even belong in the natural flow of incarnational procedure, I guess you could say, of this planet. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't be treated as human beings. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that when the time comes, they're going to have to go elsewhere. And when they do, they're going to go down fighting because that's their nature. While Thoth stresses to me that no soul is evil, because that's the container for the spirit, and the spirit cannot be evil. The energy surrounding that soul can be. It can be so encased in what we consider, you know, that we define as the word evil, that it is, he calls it, a fractured soul. And those are just not able to receive any kind of understanding of the process of spirit, at least not for a very long time. But I don't wish to end this video on that note. Let us look ahead at more positive signals. And that is that a larger number of souls on this earth than in just a very short time ago will be able to move through the portal because of a great deal of assistance from the higher levels of spirit, the angelics, the, the illumined ones, and others. 
and also because this time shift has occurred. And I believe that is part of what Thoth calls the Great Dispensation. It's not about who's been naughty or nice. It's about frequency. What frequency are you carrying? You don't have to have a belief system. You don't have to be esoterically educated. You don't have to know Thoth speak. You don't have to do any of those things. You can be a dairy farmer out in Kansas with five or six cows you're milking. And, uh, you know, a hard life, hard living has to be made. And yet you have a good heart. You carry that frequency in your heart and you do the best you can for yourself, your family, your friends, your community, and your planet. That's all it takes. That said, the seeker, the quester, as you would be if you're listening to this video, that's a good thing because it helps you understand frequency and understand what your heart is really speaking to you on a deeper level when you touch into information that resonates with you. And when you listen to your own higher self, which is the most important thing. But all of this is your means, your way to contact and to touch that frequency and to become more a part of it, to create it, to generate it in your whole being. For you, it's this path. For the dairy farmer, it's just being a good guy and helping his neighbor out and treating his cows good too. <laughs> As always, I state that everything I put out into the public audience, my videos, my written work, what I say and do, is all based on my own experience. And I feel I've had a rather unique experience in this incarnation. And I call it being connected to this superluminal flow that I identify as the Thoth extreme, connected to a being named Thoth. <laughs> all of these things are my experience, my reality of what is going on in my spiritual self. And if you resonate with it, perhaps there's something you can take away that will help you. So I conclude this video here, and thank you for listening and watching.